I'm glad you asked that question because there's a lot of confusion uh, on many of the things that you, you brought up. So let's just start off with a couple of definitions. And one is what screening is. So screening is you want to, uh, you just turn 50 years old, right? And you have no, you're asymptomatic, you have no signs, no symptoms. And we want to see, is there any blood in the stool? Uh, which might be an indication that there's a polyp or cancer or something there uh, to be followed up on. And that's a simple home-based stool test where you poop in the toilet, you take a little stick into the, into the poop, it goes into a test tube and it's sent to the lab looking uh, you know, for uh, essentially blood in the stool. And if positive, you do a colonoscopy. There are, in fact, in early development, but none which have really realized any um, you know, uh, potential as a screening uh, tool in broad use, some blood-based tests where they take a blood sample from your arm and they analyze it. Now, we have no blood tests now that have been approved uh, in Canada and that are utilized for that. But then you mentioned ctDNA. So let's talk about ctDNA or circulating tumor cells, which is a little bit different. So the first is, do you have in prevention something that would lead us to suspect that there's a polyp and you proceed with a colonoscopy after any of these tests, whether blood tests or FIT tests or any other test that, that's done? Uh, for example, in the United States, they have a Cologuard, a DNA test. Any of those tests, if positive, lead to a colonoscopy. CTDNA which may one day be used as a screening test, but not now, is a little bit different. It's used in order to search for circulating tumor cells after you have had surgery, primarily for stage one and stage two cancers, and to see, is there any circulating tumor cells, little, little microscopic cells floating around in your blood, that if they're there, then perhaps you should continue and do some adjuvant treatment or preventative treatment with chemotherapy or other targeted therapies, as the case may be. But generally, chemotherapy, either Falfox or Falfiri, plus or minus Bevacizumab in some cases, um, and usually it's Falfox. Um, uh, it, you know, depending if it's, it's if it's just five, stage one or stage two, it'll be one or the other. So it's used as a test to determine whether or not to proceed with, with a treatment to prevent the recurrence of the disease. Of late, they're looking at it even in later stage disease for the same reasons. Is there a recurrence of a disease for metastatic disease and should, should a uh, ctDNA test be used? There's a couple on the market right now. We used to have a Canadian homegrown one, uh, Connexia. Uh, I'm not sure that that's still available in the United States and available in Canada uh, by self-pay. There's a Natera Signatera test. So there are these ctDNA tests, and, and in the United States, there's some, some big institutions that have developed their own uh, testing for that uh, similarly. But it's still not in common use. It's rather expensive for the average patient uh, to be used, and um, I think it's it's uh, it's just entering prime time. It's not quite there yet, just entering. But it is used, and it is very exciting uh, avenue to look at because it can perhaps prevent the recurrence of a disease uh, post surgery and early stage cancers, and might even be able to be used as a tool um, for when to restart treatment. Uh, you know, later on in metastatic, metastatic disease as well, post-surgery. So quite exciting, but very important to distinguish between the screening, no signs, no symptoms, you're just an average person walking around, and those who had surgery for colon or rectal cancer, and the testing to see whether or not to restart treatment.